to a homosexual marriage in the debate because if you give people all the rights of marriage, not calling it marriage, what the courts and the people say is, well, if they're getting all the rights, why not just call it marriage? Um, really quickly here, uh, 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 I think one of the good ways to deal with this issue, I call it the sexual sin substitution test. Whenever you're dealing with this issue, you hear the word gay or homosexual, substitute another sexual sin for that word and see if it makes sense. Obviously, we, we, I don't think there's ever been an adultery pride parade. I've never heard somebody call a pornophobe because they oppose pornography. Uh, President Obama doesn't, doesn't issue uh, uh, Porn Users Proclamation Month. So we're dealing with a lot of special attention to this one particular behavior because there's a huge lobby behind it. Now, keep in mind that the tactics we're seeing, which have been called homo-fascist tactics, uh, uh, this, this incredible intolerance that comes out of the homosexual activist movement, which Bill has been victimized and I have been victimized by, and this is the movement which calls any organized opposition against it, public opposition, hate, that word that, which is hard to defend against when you're called a hate group. Saying you're not a hater is sort of like saying you don't beat your wife, right? It's very hard to defend against. But uh, uh, the, the left is uh, constantly on offense, and I think that what we need to do is we need to get back on offense ourselves. And so what my group, Americans for Truth About Homosexuality, is going to be uh, doing more is more of a direct action activism, which Bill is known for, going around the media, because the media now is part and parcel of the LGBT movement. The media gives them the power. The media does not cover ex-gays. The media does not cover the astronomical disease rates associated with homosexuality. Two examples. Syphilis now, I think the CDC reported that 84% of the new syphilis cases, I'm not sure the year, I think it was, I can't remember the year, 2011, 84% of syphilis cases are now men who have sex with men. So syphilis is virtually now the latest gay disease. HIV, 94 to 95% of HIV cases among young men ages 13 to 24. First of all, how does a 13-year-old boy get HIV? That suggests predation. predation. But 13 to 24, 94 to 95% of those cases involve homosexual sexual behavior. If this were any other behavior, with this strong of a connection to disease, there would be a full-scale mobilization against the behavior. But instead, the Centers for Disease Control uh, refuses to take common sense uh, 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 practices to, to, to dislodge the behavior, and they also hold up the behavior and attack stigma and homophobia, etc. Uh, the CDC has not even moved to close down the homosexual bathhouses in Atlanta, where it is based. And homosexual bathhouses are now proliferating in Canada and the United States, big cities. These are places where men go for indiscriminate sex with other men, anonymous sexual activity. Uh, there's now uh, 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 app, uh, a mobile app, it's called Grinder, and there's many copies to it in which men can find casual sex partners literally by the feet. They look on Grinder. Oh, there's uh, Joe also on Grinder at Fifth Avenue in Roosevelt. Uh, 65 feet away, and they, and they literally are, are hooking up for sex uh, by using an app. And they're now grinder addicts because guys are getting addicted to this, and they're leaving, and they're, they're you know, missing from their job for a couple hours. I mean, this is what's going on, and yet our government in the United States, and, I, and I'm, I'm sure the same in Canada, are not dealing with the root cause, which we have to get back to. Uh, my time is, is, is almost up, but let me say that um, Rather than give up or say that uh, this is, we are somehow uh, destined to lose, I think now we have to say we're only, we have only begun to fight on this issue. We have to return to principle, we have to educate our young people. Rather than succumb to, to the ideas of, of a propagandized generation which is woefully illiterate on this issue, which, are, which have never even heard of ex-gays, as most people in the West have not, because the media covers it up. We need to learn about these things, and we need to teach them. That, this is how the pro-life gained such incredible momentum. And to my pro-life friends, I would say, no pro-lifer should support the homosexual activists in general. I don't believe God can honor a movement which, uh, in the name of fighting one evil, looks aside or, or actually promotes another evil. And yet some people are doing that. Some pro-lifers now are, 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 are advocating for homosexual so-called marriage, which I believe is immoral uh, to do that. And yet it's happening. And so uh, I would encourage your pro-life friends 
to get informed on this. And of course, uh, the homosexual agenda is part of the culture of death. Uh, to have, uh, to see our young people, um, uh, the HIV rates going up among especially young men, I believe is highly relevant. Um, the latest, uh, uh, you see now the arguments for so-called gay Christianity. This is this is moving fast in the evangelical world. And I just heard a wonderful presentation by Dr. Michael Brown. I would recommend his book, Can You Be Gay and Christian? Dr. Michael Brown. Uh, and uh, the, the arguments for gay, so-called gay Christianity are, are foolhardy. Um, Jesus tightened the, the uh, sexual ethic. He said it was lustful to even, to, it was a, it was a, to, you would commit adultery for a man to even look with lust on, on a woman. So it's inconceivable that Jesus, who was tightening the, the sexual ethic, would have supported a, a behavior, sodomy, which was condemned uh, in, in Hebrew uh, history. Um, and uh, the, the argument is often said, well, Jesus never discussed homosexuality. Well, that's absurd. And that you could list all sorts of practices, such as gang rape, that Jesus did not discuss. And so these are, these are uh, ridiculous arguments that are put forth mainly because they can gain traction in a biblically illiterate culture. And so the answer to that, of course, is to become literate uh, biblically, uh, but also to, uh, to, uh, to quickly refute uh, these arguments. Um, I believe that uh, Christians uh, of whatever denomination are, are really the last best hope for our culture, and it's up to us to, uh, to fight with principle, to stand with God and not with the world. Um, you know, Bill is a pretty fearless guy. Whether you agree with all his tactics or not, his bravery is to be commended because he actually goes out there and does not fear the wrath. He does not fear to be the condemnation of man. He's out there because he's standing for what God has called him to do. And this is the attitude that we must have. We must stand with God and, and we will be persecuted. Jesus said, you know, you must expect persecution as a believer. And so now is not the time to be holding up our finger and seeing which way the wind is blowing in homosexuality. Now is the time to lead the culture and educate our young people and stand for truth on this issue. Thank you.